The, the thing is that I love the negotiation that you seem to have gone through for this, because, yes, will you do your autobiography? Yes, I will. But was that... That was your way of getting Yes, what I did was... And this is so annoying. If anyone out there is an aspiring author, you know, it's so difficult. It is so difficult to, you know, get the agent, to get the publisher deals. Mm. So smug git off telly goes, yes, you can have the memoir uh, if if you will also agree to publish this novel that I haven't written yet, don't know what it's about, you haven't seen, and we don't know anything. And they went, yes. Uh, now, it could have gone horribly wrong, but happily the first novel went Did really, really well. well, so uh, now there's a second one. So why, why write a novel? I mean, you, as you said, you're so good at so many other things. What was it about this? I guess it was that... It was, it was turning 50, it was, where you kind of... You know, you kind of think, what... What, what haven't I done? Mm. What would I like to do? And I had always been... I'd been that guy who'd always said, oh, I'd love to write a novel. Mm. And at some point, you either need to shut up or do it. It's right. not rocket science, you know, you just do it. Um, so uh, I got the deal, but then, of course, you do have to do it. Yeah. Mm. And the vast majority of novels uh, in the world are unfinished. They're in bottom drawers, they're on memory sticks. And so uh, that was the bit I wasn't sure I'd be able to do. Could I complete this task. Um, the deal it, didn't say that you had to finish well, it. Well, you don't have to finish it in this, you know, then that's the end of the deal. You broke, you broke the deal. But what was a, a kind of revelation and such a relief was that, in fact, I loved mm. the process of writing. Mm. Was the, sto the story was there. The first story, uh, in fact, both books have come from stories my mother told me. Yeah. Uh, so the first book was about uh, an abandoned house we saw and it, it was totally left intact and, you know, nature had taken the house back and I kind of spiralled that out into a story. This one was a story she told me about someone who had answered a Lonely Hearts ad mm -hmm. And all going well, corresponding with this farmer. But then there's a twist in the book about. There's more than one twist. Well, there's quite a few twists in the book. There really but, is. but the, the twist in the book about the letters is real. That came from life. Well, that, I, that's the truth. That's true. Yes. And I just wow. thought, ooh, that's juicy. I'm having that. So, it's uh, quite dark. I mean, there's some real moments of. There are, but, but, but I. It's not a sort of bleak, depressing book. It's dark in a sort of these Irish gothic -y way. It, it is a work of entertainment. It's a yeah. yarn, mm. I would say. Yeah. But it's two stories. So you have Elizabeth and Patricia. Yes. And, uh, and as we've said, because I, I, I thought it should well, be, for what you've got in it, it should be about that much thicker. Because <laughs> this, is, this is a twisty, turny thing. Should, should I have added water before I served this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it puts more stock in. But it's great because you think, OK, all right, Fine, well, I'm beginning to get to terms with, with this. Oh my god! Well, that because happened. I'm I don't know about you, when I read a book, I like I like plot. I'm all for a beautiful sentence and atmosphere and all those things, but I like to know why I'm reading a book. Something needs to be happening. And the two timelines, the the kind of there's a the, the darker timeline is back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And that tells the story of Patricia uh, having this sort of awkward romance with Edward that then goes to a strange place. And, but then, in relief, is sort of you know the one away in a in a, a sort of one of those thrillers. In, it's dark, 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 yeah. dark, and then it cuts to sunshine, you and you're like, that. Oh, oh, that, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad now. Yeah. Oh, let oh please, please stay in the sunshine for a little bit. So that's what the kind of the modern day story is like. It's just to yeah. it's to get get you give you some relief. And so now, as a writer, do you <laughs> think? I mean, is everywhere a story for you? And you know, you got the stories from your mother, but do you are you constantly on the lookout or remembering the or thinking, oh, that would be good for the next book, or meeting characters you think, oh, I'll take that bit from you. Yes, but I haven't reached the point yet where I would throw my friends onto the bus. Right. You know, yes. or people I really know well onto the bus. Uh, I've, I've stolen lots of locations in this book. And these are all places I know in West Cork and around Kilkenny that, you know, I knew from my childhood. Um, but the stories and the characters are all invention. Because don't you do that? You read a book mm. by someone you know and you think, well, I hope so and so doesn't read this because that's, I recognise this, yeah. and uh, and maybe by book three I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be like, sorry, I like the. <laughs> I need a book more than your friendship. <laughs> 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 um, but, uh, but so far, so far, I've I've uh, sort of stayed on the right side of the line. Yeah. Well, it's certainly uh, Ireland has uh, has given you uh, a rich tapestry to draw from. N not not least your locations w w w was caravanning. I don't see you as a caravan. Well, I wasn't a caravan. You're a child. You go where you're told. I mean, I'm, parents give children choice. 
Oasis now. Where would you like to go on holiday? <laughs> no, in the car. When we get there, you'll find out where we're going. It's a caravan. So uh, that, was, that, was, that was my childhood. And the, the house with the castle house that's in the book, mm. that was kind of at the end of this lane and there was the old orchard and everything. I didn't put the caravan with the annoying child in it. Mm. Um, I, felt, I felt that was enough. Well, we'll wait for... That, that'll be the next one. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's definitely... And, the, and as far as you... You've said that um, you're... Uh, you felt that you weren't very Irish. Well, you were kind of made to feel that in a way because I grew up in Southern Ireland as a Protestant and there's only about, I think something tiny, like three or four percent of the population are Protestant. Mm. So there's a thing in, in Ireland, like people would sign letters to the newspaper, to the radio, you know, so-and-so, a good Irish Catholic. And it seemed like you need all three of those words to be any of them. Right. And I, so without the Catholic, you felt, can I be a real Irish? And you were made to feel less and yet you'd go, well, I can't be anything else. I can't lay claim on any other nationality. I am Irish. And it's taken me a long time, really, to kind of get my head around that yeah. and to kind of you know, own uh, my Irishness. And the fact that you, you've also said that but the, at the time, certainly then, that nobody in Ireland was gay. Well, in my... I mean, obviously they were. Mm. There were gay people, and I'm sure there were gay bars in Dublin and Cork, or whatever, but I didn't know. And also, I wasn't even sure that I was. You know, that... that those realisations come to you slowly because you, you don't want to be. So you're kind of thinking, well, maybe I'm not, maybe, you know... So, uh, but how Ireland has changed. Yeah, I mean, Ireland absolutely. is such a kind of optimistic, hopeful, lovely place right now. Yeah. And, it, and it's young people uh, kind of doing it, getting engaged in politics and, and turning that country around. Absolutely. I think it's amazing. Yeah, um, we can't have you here and not speak, obviously, about the Graham Norton show. Um, you said something made me laugh, that you would, wouldn't want to do that show live. No. Why? <laughs> well, because then... <laughs> well... I mean, we could do it live, but I think it's just better not. Because? Uh, well, because then we can cut out the boring bits. <laughs> we can, uh, you know, if people try to tell an anecdote and you kind of think, well, I did ask him to tell that anecdote. I didn't know it was 20 minutes long and I didn't um. know it wasn't funny. Uh, on paper, it looked hilarious. Um, but, uh, so then we can cut it out. So I suppose we'd make a very... If we were doing it live, we'd make it a very different show, probably. Mm. Yeah. Fair who, are your, uh, who are your guests this weekend? Uh, this weekend, we've got the great uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, wow. uh, She's on. Uh, Jamie Dornan, uh, Rosamund Pike. I'll forget someone now. And, uh, I mean, that's... and BTS are on. Do you know who BTS are? I don't, yeah. They are this uh, uh, Korean pop band. Oh, oh I do know. Are... I do know. I do know. They are... You... Huge. How much Korean music have you no, got? Do you know I, can't look, I can't look at my There's Twitter right now because my Twitter Instagram. feed is yeah. just BTS fans all going, yes, I do please know. say ho. There's seven of the minute. They're going to have something like 30 dancers. It's... It's... Phenomenal. How do you know them? Because I saw on Instagram <laughs> there's, really a picture of them getting, <laughs> there's a picture of them getting off the plane out. and they all they're all there, like en masse, all of them. Yeah. It's like it's like kind Well, of... when you come in on Thursday when we're recording the show, yeah. you'll notice there'll be an army in the street. You'll have trouble getting in. I can't wait now. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'll know what it's all about. And now you'll know. <laughs> you'll you'll be like, like, I know, BTS yeah. You it's are BTS, next door but one. Yes, we're right there, yeah. We could knock through. And and it's 